you can participate in a burnout society without actually burning out. You can, part you can be a participant in that type of society. That's called being a winner or being high functioning or high performing. But because in this type of society, which is centered on achievement, it is an achievement oriented society. Because in that type of society, we constantly confront infinite possibilities, infinite opportunities. Even the winners cannot escape loss, the feeling of loss because of their finitude. And maybe the biggest loss is the loss of a world that gives you a resting place and recognizes you as anything other than your achievements and your performance. A world that cares about you and your humanity. The Burnout Society, Byung Chul Han. It's a philosophical essay that connects the private human experience of exhaustion, alienation, isolation with larger social and cultural factors. Han invites us to question our forms of life, to stop and contemplate how we are living at the societal and the personal level. What is it about our life, our way of life, our relationship with the world, with work, with our projects, that not just make us susceptible to exhaustion, but make us into a kind of participant, a kind of consciousness, a kind of hyperactive participant in this society that is called the burnout society. So we have become a kind of subject, kind of hyperactive subject that is oriented toward achievement, a kind of life, a form of life. His analysis is based on very useful concepts and distinctions, and he takes great care introducing these concepts. For example, he talks about two ways of being tired, two very different ways of being tired. One, the tiredness that connects us. Second, the tiredness that isolates us from each other. The first type, that the, the connecting tiredness, the, the tiredness with others, with the world. The first type of tiredness happens when you trust the world. So it is you're tired against the background of a world in which you trust. And maybe it is the world that also trusts you and cares about you. In that situation, exhausting yourself with work has a different meaning compared to when you're isolated. As you get tired, as you run out of steam, you are able to find a resting place in the world and you are finding the world again. You're your tiredness allows you to not take that project as seriously anymore. It's like, okay, I'm tired. I'm tired of that for now. What else is there? What else is there in the, in the world? What about others? What about other parts of me? What about those parts of me that are not connected to that thing that exhausted me? So it's about the ability to find other things in the world and to find other ways of seeing both yourself and the world and other people, your relationships. But in the achievement-oriented society, where people are judged primarily based on their success, their performance, their achievements, we are alienated from ourselves. You only recognize, identify yourself na yourselves narrowly uh, based on your achievement. And we don't trust the world to also give us that recognition besides our, uh, our functioning and performance. And the world, therefore, doesn't seem to offer us a resting place. And the result is that everyone gets tired in isolation in their own corner, unable to speak about that tiredness and unable to see others. The path to getting exhausted, Han argues, isn't about failing to guard your time and your mind against external forces, like failing to push back against tasks and responsibilities that aren't really part of you, they're coming from outside. It is not about that. It is about having already extended yourself and your ego, your identity too much. It's about an over-identification with too many things that we are doing, too many tasks. And they, are, they have already become internal. You can, as long as your tasks and your duties, as long as the source of pressure is outside, even if the source of exploitation, even if, it is, if that is the thing that is outside, as long as it is outside, we find it natural to push back against it. 
we find it meaningful to push back against something that is outside, that is commanding us or trying to exploit us. But what if the source of exploitation is, is internal? We have learned it, we have internalized it, we have made it a part of us. That's how we, are, we have come to feel ourselves, to, to make sense of ourselves. How do you guard yourself against your own internal criteria of evaluation? What if the problem has already taken root in our form of consciousness? The book itself is a tool for contemplation because of its style, its, its size, and its aphoristic way of expression, presentation. It, has, it is, I think, giving us a tool against the burnout society, against excess, against speed. Uh, and the book encourages us to slow down, to revive the idea of boundaries. You don't have to read this book, but whatever it is that you're reading, you can be inspired uh, by books like this, by ideas like these. You can be inspired, and whatever it is that you're reading or whatever it is that you're doing or watching on TV uh, in a more slow and mindful way, in a more contemplative way, as opposed to impulsively and compulsively doing or clicking or turning the page. And that contemplation um, allows us to be aware, at least, of the type of societies, cultures that we are living in. The next book I'll be reading by the same author, Byung Chul Han, is The Transparency Society. If you're interested in joining me, um, feel free to do so next week. Um, a big thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in my reading group, the information is available below. Otherwise, thank you. Till next time.